Hello, my beautiful Taurus. Welcome to your Zodiac reading. Um, this is the Dream Clairvoyant. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So this message is for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Venus, or Rising. As you can see, I've already shuffled the cards. I asked, what is the message for Taurus? My beautiful people who carry the, the Zodiac sign Taurus and their Sun, Moon, Venus, or Rising. And as you can see, these are the cards that, that came out. Um, where do I even start, Taurus? You have someone here, and of course, this could always be you, so feel free to reverse the role. This could be you who I'm talking about or someone who you're connected to, but it looks like, Taurus, you have someone, uh, I see someone who's in this Nine of Swords energy, okay? They're doing a whole lot of thinking to the point where it's most likely causing them sleepless nights, and I'm hearing that they can't concentrate well, because maybe this is someone who already has a lot on their plate and they're doing a whole lot of thinking about someone, okay? So this person, whether it's you or them, I'm just gonna say this person, they are really in distress about a um, about their love interest. You even have the five of wands in the reverse and the, and the page of swords. So the five of wands in the reverse, we rarely see it because in the upright, it's conflict, it's drama, it's competition, right? So in the re in the reverse, there is no conflict or the conflict has been resolved. Um, I feel like, uh-oh, ooh, hold on, you guys. I just heard something. Let me look into this more. What was it about? Clarify the five of wands in the reverse. What was the conflict about? You have the Emperor card that's here. Hmm. Then you have the Ten of Cups. Clarify the Five of Wands in the reverse. See, I'm being nosy. <laughs> I'm sure you're wondering. Let me see. Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so there was really no conflict here. Um, I feel like what this is about you have someone hmm you have someone here who they're constantly thinking like what if okay i get what this is they're constantly like what if this person does this to me what if they break my heart what if they're cheating what if you know they're interested in many other people you know they're hurting their head over the what ifs because they're here. They're at a distance with the page of swords. They're at a distance watching and making all sorts of like assumptions, you know, jumping to conclusions when they can just go and approach the person that they're interested in and communicate, express how they feel. What the five of wands in the reverse is saying is this person is worrying about a non-issue like like they're worrying when there's no need to worry there's no conflict there's no conflict here there's no competition here there's no problems it's it's they're making it up in their head that's why the nine of swords you see them staying up late at night right assuming things that aren't even real that aren't even there the high priestess with the page of cups all right. And that clarifies it because when we when we clarify the five of wands, the emperor, the emperor is someone who's well established, comfortably sitting in his position of power, control, authority, ten of cups, happy home life, happily ever after, ace of pentacles. This connection is a blessing. Right. Someone's worrying about an issue, a problem that is not in existence, like, you know, Anyways, let's move towards this high priestess here. The high priestess, I feel like this individual, this person is very mysterious. They keep quiet. Maybe they even sort of keep themselves hidden in the background. I feel like this is more so of a secret admirer. The Page of Cups is a big secret admirer card. Page of Cups is typically someone, pages are all about communication, you know, but I feel like this is someone who hasn't been expressing their feelings and emotions. They've been sort of hiding in the background, admiring their love interest, okay, and making up issues that aren't even real, right? The Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands is a stand your ground card. I feel like this is someone who is 
uh, naturally defensive. Um, this may have been someone who was really hurt and disappointed by others. So they've just sort of learned to, you know, stay quiet, stay to themselves to avoid heartbreak. But they are interested in someone and things won't move forward until they get out of this high priestess energy and they make themselves known to their person of interest. Okay, um, let's look more at this high priestess energy. Nine of Wands, man. Nine of Wands is a wounded warrior card. Okay. It's a wounded warrior card. So this person, Nine of Wands could even be someone who's like paranoid, defensive, traumatized. I feel like this person, they've had really bad encounters with just foul people, you know, maybe even malicious people, rude, ignorant, selfish people. So they've sort of lost, they've lost hope. They've lost faith in humanity in a way. And um, I feel like they're also really frustrated because they're not getting anywhere with the person that they want. Like there's no progression here. And it's because of the, uh, the method that they're using. The way they're in this high priestess energy, they may not be talking much or doing much, but yet they're frustrated that they're not getting the outcome that they want, you know? Yeah, they're, they're frustrated because with the six of swords, things aren't moving forward, right? Things are moving forward with the one that they're interested in, but how can things move forward if they're so quiet like this with the high priestess? The high priestess knows a lot, but doesn't say much. You know, they're keeping themselves in this like mysterious energy, okay? Um, let's look at the Seven of Cups and the Seven of Pentacles. Hmm. Also the Two of Cups here. So the Seven of Cups is a card that talks about someone who's, who's thinking, doing a lot of thinking and weighing their options. They're wondering what, what do they need to do to bring this connection together, right? To bring the two of them together with the Two of Cups a beautiful, passionate partnership. The Seven of Pentacles is someone who's very committed, right? Very committed to achieving their goals. They're very persistent. I feel like this person does have the passion. They really, really have been committed to bringing this connection together. But I feel like the method that they're using, it's not bringing them the success that they want with their love interest. Okay, the Queen of Wands is here. Um, they do a whole lot of thinking. They're very committed to uh, pursuing a Queen of Wands, which is someone that they're very attracted to. Queen of Wands represents someone who's very pleasing to the eyes. They're very sexy, very attractive, very ambitious, you know, go-getter type of energy. That's how they see their their person of interest. Clarify this Queen of Wands. Strength. Wow, yeah, this is a very courageous individual. They've overcome um, a lot in their life. I feel like this is someone who's very independent as well. They can, they can stand their ground, they can handle their own, you know, a very powerful individual. You have the Seven of Swords that's here. Clarify the Seven of Swords. You have the Ten of Cups. Yeah, they. I feel like this person is extremely independent, so much to the point where I feel like they've left a lot behind. They've left their past behind and maybe even started a brand new life for themselves and made a much more happier and fulfilling life for themselves. They definitely left a lot in the past and started over all by themselves. So this is a very courageous individual. Um, I feel like in the past, they were not getting what they deserved from those past people. And so they ended up just, it's like someone escaped. Yeah, someone really just left their past behind and started a much more happy life for themselves, where they are now in a, in a place where they're receiving all that they deserve. So this person doesn't settle, okay? This Queen of Wands does not settle at all. Um, so why is this person, this, this main character here, why are they carrying this high priestess energy? I wonder if they're just nervous, if they're just shy, you know, which is common 
Let me see. The world. Hmm. Why are they in this high priestess energy here? Is this someone who's just shy, nervous? Yeah, it's because they, it's almost like this person feels like if they keep themselves hidden, they won't get hurt. You know, this, the three of swords is here. This person has been hurt by other, by other people. They've been disappointed and the world represents a successful completion. The thing is they're in a brand new beginning right? They're, they're in a brand new chapter of their life, but they're still carrying around old baggage, past baggage. Take the lessons, but leave the baggage behind. Leave the baggage in the past, right? Um, it's like they're in a brand new beginning. They're in a brand new chapter. And clearly there's a beautiful partnership here, but they're still acting like they're in the past. It's like someone who, it's like that wounded warrior energy where you're, you know, the divine has blessed you with a brand new beginning and has sent beautiful new people into your life, but you still have that, 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 that wounded warrior mentality where you still think that you're on the battlefield right? You still think that you're on, on the battlefield, even though the battle has ended, the divine has removed you and protected you and granted you a brand new life, a brand new beginning, a brand new chapter with brand new people, but your, your mind is still in the past. What I'm saying is there's need for healing, healing and forgiving and forgiveness, forgiving yourself. And now that you know better, you can do better. When you forgive yourself, for not knowing better, for the mistakes that you made. Listen, if we don't make mistakes, we'll never learn. That's the whole point of life, learning lessons that takes us to our greatest enlightenment, okay? It was all a lesson. It was meant for you to learn, to gain some wisdom, to gain that character development. And now that you're in a new season, a new chapter, use that wisdom. Use all that you learned from the past and make a beautiful life for yourself, Okay, it's like you have a wounded warrior, someone who who is still in that mentality of a wounded warrior, and they're not wounded anymore. They're just a warrior. They're not a wounded warrior anymore because they 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 left that past situation. They're in a new life now. They're just a warrior, a powerful warrior who just needs healing. Yeah. Literally, the world represents a successful completion. This person here has successfully completed those karmic chapters, right? Those toxic cycles with people. They've completed it successfully. And now they're in that transitional period where they're meant to be starting new things, starting something new with new people, but they're still stuck on the heartbreak and the disappointment. That doesn't help. That doesn't change anything. It just keeps yourself in a stagnant energy where there's no progression in your life. You're not moving forward. Page of Wands. There is something new and exciting that has entered this person's life, and it's that Queen of Wands. This person is the Page of Wands. They have so much passion. The spark, it's like when this queen of wands stepped into their world, they finally got that passion back, that spark, that charisma back. They immediate, it was an, literally the tower, the lovers in the tower, it was an instant connection. They were starstruck when they met this queen of wands. They immediately felt that with the lovers here, they immediately felt that, that soulmate connection that soulmate bond. They may have even felt like they knew this, this queen of wands from somewhere. You know how you meet someone new, but your soul recognizes them? That's that familiar soul. That's what the lovers is. Maybe in this lifetime, this is your first time meeting them, but your soul recognizes theirs because in past lifetimes, you guys cross paths. It was an immediate attraction. It's like I feel like it was like love at first sight. I, I, someone here felt chills when they saw the other person. I just heard it. Someone felt chills. It was such a magnetic connection. 
It may have even sent someone into the hermit energy, right? Where they were trying to understand and research, why do I feel so attracted to this person? Why did I feel that way when I first saw them? Like it sent this person into hermit into hermit mode where they started researching, studying, meditating, looking into what this connection really is because it was a powerful, strong connection. I feel like someone here is struggling with the ego. You know, who are, who are we? This is what I say to myself whenever I'm stuck on what someone did to me and I'm holding a grudge and I'm being resentful and bitter and unforgiving. I always tell myself, who am I that someone can't disrespect? Who am I that somebody can't play? Who am I that somebody can't take advantage of? Who am I that somebody can't disappoint? If they could do it to, if they could do it to Jesus Christ, then who am I that people wouldn't do it to? People are selfish. People are wicked. But when you're able to humble yourself and just say, oh my gosh, yeah, I did let that person take advantage of me. I did let that person play me. I did let that person disappoint me. But what's the lesson in that? What is it that the divine is trying to teach me here? The lesson lies in the experience. But if you're so prideful, and egotistical, you end up getting so angry and you miss out on the lesson. You overlook the lesson and you don't gain the wisdom that you're meant to gain. <laughs> you know, sometimes when people do dirty things to you, just be like, yeah, they played me. Yeah, they broke my heart. Yeah, I overlooked the red flag. You just got to let go of the pride and ego and see what you need to learn, what you need to do better. And it's a matter of you forgiving yourself for not knowing better, forgiving yourself for making that mistake, for letting yourself go through those things and saying, never again will I let it happen. Try me again. Now that I've learned the lesson, it won't happen. It won't, I won't let it repeat itself. Life is all about learning lessons. You know, and you're not too good to make mistakes. <laughs> some of us have a whole lot of because I used to be that way I would beat myself up for making mistakes no one is too good for failing and making mistakes so when you make one just learn the lesson and do better it's a beautiful connection here Someone has been blessed with a new beginning. It's like a transition. Someone here, it's like the divine's trying to transition someone's life, push them towards a new beginning, a new chapter. But that mentality, they're still carrying the mentality of the past. Healing is needed and forgiveness, forgiveness of the self, for self-forgiveness is needed. I'm gonna end the reading here, Taurus. Thank you guys so very much. Please take care and many blessings to you.